Okay, whenever you're ready. All right, do we have everybody in? I think so. Okay, super. Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming. We're going to um, get this meeting going. This afternoon, License Commission, Wednesday, December 7th, 4 p.m. Um, present this afternoon, myself, Natasha Yakovlev, Commissioners Helen Kahn, and Jennifer Ewers. And this meeting is being Zoom recorded. Do we have anybody here for public comment before we begin the agenda? Seeing no public comment, we are going to move on then to item number three, <clears throat> request change of date and start time on a previously approved short-term liquor license. And I don't see Melissa here. Is there somebody else here from the Academy at the moment? Yeah, I don't see anybody. Okay. Um, so this this was approved at the last meeting. Yep. Um, he unintentionally put the wrong date. Okay. It was Friday, um, and instead of a start time of, of seven, she was hoping to change it to six. Okay, no problem. So it's just administrative? Yeah. Do the other commissioners have any comments or questions? No, I think we can uh, go ahead and approve it. No All right, questions. then I'll make a motion to approve the change of date and start time on the previously approved short-term liquor license outlined in agenda item number three. A second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great, thank you. Agenda item number four, application for a short-term liquor license for the Northampton Rotary Foundation Incorporated on Saturday, December 10th from 12 to 6 at Northampton Volkswagen, 361 King Street. This is for the Festival of Trees, and it is a wine and malt license. And uh, Commissioner Ewers will be recusing herself from deliberating on this item. Do we have somebody here from... We don't. Yeah, no, I don't see anybody. Right. Then we're going to put that on hold, too. Item number five, application for a short-term liquor license. Building 8 Brewing for Friday, December 30th from 5 to 12.30 a.m. at Bombix, 130 Pine Street in Florence. And this is for wine and malt. And I do see O'Brien is here. O'Brien, do you, do you have us? Yes, I do. How's that? That's much better. How are you? Pretty good. How are you all doing on this fine, beautiful spring day? <laughs> it's a nice day, right? Yeah. Um, so you want to just fill us in on this Yes, uh, there'll, there'll be um, a, a live performance. It's kind of uh, Bombix's New Year's Eve. Uh, it's the only show I'm going to do there for uh, the month of December. Uh, I believe there is one band with maybe a DJ after. And uh, we'll be serving once again, uh, building a beer and a uh, uh, couple of ciders from Artifact down the street. Uh, I'll have someone helping me and uh, it's a it's a pretty easy thing and hopefully uh, there'll be a, a decent crowd for the Friday before New Year's. Excellent. Does anyone have any questions for O'Brien? No, I do not. No, no sounds questions. Like, sounds like the standard. Yep, uh, except the uh, this time there is going to be food served. Okay, uh, great. They just got their kitchen approved, so we'll actually have some food to kind of, you know, uh, uh, to get into some people so they can, you know, eat and drink, you know, which is always better for everybody. <laughs> yes, great. Well, that, yeah, no, that is good to hear. Yeah. Um, would somebody like to make a motion then to approve this? Uh, sure, I'll make a motion to approve the application for a short-term liquor license for building a brewing as detailed in item five on the agenda. I will second. <laughs> and Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right. Item number six. We have a public hearing on an application for a transfer of an all, all annual all alcohol inholder license transferring from Ellery Server LLC, transferring to the Ellery Hotel LLC. The proposed manager is Andrew Cox. And I'll make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. Is there anyone present who would like to speak to this item? Yes. Is public? Unmute Andy. Thank you. And Trevor? Yep. Great. Perfect. Okay, great. No public comment, though. No. no. Okay, great. Hi. No, we're, I'm, I'm with the college. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, we own the LRE. LLC and um, 
Yeah, no, I, I guess no immediate plans. We just don't want it to expire and the city to lose it. I yeah. know the previous uh, management company had bottle service like beer and wine to rooms, but that's all it's really been in the past. And so we're still honestly in a stabilization period and probably going to take a year before we decide to make any changes. We're, there's a lot of infrastructure upgrades that we need first. So mm -hmm. um, Trevor is the general manager there. And um, yeah, I guess if there's any questions you have, they don't don't really know how it will be implemented yet. And um, just don't want to lose the ability to use it in the future. Sure. Nope, that makes total sense. Um, Helen and Jennifer, do you have any questions or comments initially? Uh, I don't know. I do not know. Yeah, no, I don't have any questions. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we don't have any questions. I mean, you guys were just here for your common victualer license and the inholder license. So you're familiar to us and we would uh, like to go ahead and get you sorted with this renewal. Um, Trevor, did you have anything to say? Uh, no, Andy touched on everything. Thank you. Okay, great. Excellent. Then I'll um, make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Great. And um, we have everything in order, Helen and Jennifer. Do I have nothing to add to this before we vote on it? Agreed. Are we ready? Yeah. All right. Then I will make a motion to approve the application for the transfer of the annual all alcohol inholder license as outlined in agenda item six. I second. And Natasha? Yes. Um, Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thank you for coming. Good luck with your plans. Moving on to agenda item number seven, the discussion and vote on the Chapter 109 Acts of 2016 liquor license previously held by Sylvester's Fine Foods Incorporated and the means for reissuance. Um, so in the past with these licenses, we have done a lottery and the last one that we did, Helen, you might recall, mm -hmm. uh, we laid out the criteria for who could apply to yeah. this for the lottery. And um, so we had must be already opened four or more days a week. Applicants must be a holder of wine and malt license through the city of Northampton. Applicants must be able to put the license to use no later than 90 days of the lottery. The applicant cannot already be an all alcohol liquor license holder within the city. And the applicant cannot have had any of their licenses revoked by the city. Um, so we have an opportunity <clears throat> again to decide how we wanna handle this license that we have. And um, so just open the floor for a discussion on that. Yeah, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I would uh, be in favor of just doing it exactly how we did it last time. I, mean, I remember there being a long discussion about those criteria. Yep. Um, we set it up last time and you know we all agreed at that time and I don't think anything's changed substantially to, to change how we conduct that lottery. Jennifer, do you have any questions about the process from the last time we talked about it? I don't, thank you. Okay. So Annie, it makes sounds like we would like to proceed with the same process. Okay. So then uh, I'm curious, so what would be the timing? You send out um, notification to anyone who could be um could participate in the lottery anyway if you could remind me like what the next yeah that's a great question I will have to look back what I did last time but I would say that it can go on the agenda for the January meeting mm -hmm. okay great is yeah. the uh, the um laying out the process or or getting no, the actual lottery okay. is that is this an okay time given the holidays to do that do you think we'll have the attention of all the people who might want to submit applications yeah um i mean it's not it's not a huge lift they just have to i think they just had to send a, like a letter of intention okay um you we could we could hold it off we could push it off till february if you think that's better i mean i think if if you if the list if it's not a huge list and you feel like we'll get a response. I mean, I think if you send it out and we don't get a response, you will know that some people missed it. Wouldn't you yeah. think? Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll send, I think last time what I did was send it to everyone in my folder. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll do the exact same thing I did last time. Okay. Sounds good. And then is there any kind of like press release too, in case some, someone's ignoring that email? I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember if there was a public announcement about it in addition to. Of I course, just don't announcement. think there was a public announcement. I mean, I've been in contact with all of them in November for renewals. So I know they're getting my emails. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know Amherst, didn't they just get an article published today in the Gazette about, <laughs> I think, a similar thing. They referenced us. I don't know if you all saw it. I don't no, haven't read it yet. It. Yeah. I haven't read it they, yet. They were looking to us, I mean, about how we conducted the lottery, I think. So anyway. <laughs> all right. All right. So that's the plan. Annie, I'll get the word out. Yep. Sounds good. I will get on it. <clears throat> all right. Moving on. Agenda item eight, discussion of noise complaints and building department's assessment of the entertainment at TELUS and the satellite bar. Um, so Annie has updated us all on the complaints that have come in about the sound and the city conducted, the building department conducted a decibel count. And it sounds like the issue is the people outside and the doors opening. I don't know. I kind of wish Amanda could be here today. I understand she couldn't because of the arrive at five, but I don't know um, how, I don't know what types of limitations Thorns has on accessing the common space outside of the interior entrance to TELUS. So it sounds like a great solution. I just yeah. don't know if it's going to be allowed. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess that discussion needs to be had. This is sort of anecdotal because I was recently talking with a friend who was there. And and I guess the um the way that they do it is they sort of close for dinner and then they close the door, close and lock the doors, it sounds like, and then reopen for 10 o'clock. So and and that's when the lines form. And sometimes they may open a little bit later. And anyway, the line and so the line forms outside. I don't know. I mean, logistically, I don't know if it would work for them to sort of just have the doors open the whole time. But but as I understand it, it sounds like they have to kind of clear the floor and and get ready for the the night shift. But I think part of it, that line is backing up because they sort of reopen at 10 as opposed to just having it open. You know what I mean? Between dinner and dinner and dancing. So I don't know if that would throw off their game to just allow people in during that time or not. So maybe I should just, um, for the record, just read the, um, or just let everyone know the, uh, like about the check only because the, the compliance check happened at 1130 and that's when the, the line was. Oh, closed. right. That's right. Yeah. Huh. And I also, I also didn't know about the, the 10 o'clock closure things. Yeah. So I can imagine that there's also a problem then too. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking maybe it's a capacity issue that they're at capacity, which is great, but also then a line starts forming outside um, and people start fighting. All right. Yeah. Uh. And, and then does that interior entrance via Thorns become an emergency exit? As, because there's no place for people. I mean, TELUS has restrooms, so people don't need to be exiting into that side hallway. I would imagine they also don't want people milling about in that side hallway. So I wonder what, how that door is used. I would imagine it, it is an emergency exit. Yeah. Yeah. So in the meantime, um, can you update Andrea and ask her to start a conversation with Lawrence to come up with some problem solving? Amanda? Is that her name? I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure I'm clear. Yeah, Amanda. Yep. Um, yeah, I can do that. Do Helen or Jennifer have other suggestions? No, and now I'm curious about this 11.30 p.m. line, but maybe it is a capacity issue that they have to wait for people to leave. Right, and I'd also like yeah. to hear from Thorns about the hours of access, you know, if, if it is possible to form a line indoors. 
Um, was I believe just parking in the garage that you can't cut through thorns at all hours of the night, <clears throat> but I'm not sure. Right, that's a good point because when they have to, do they have to block off then the stairs to the upstairs? They would have to block the stairs. Yeah. They would have to block because there's a freight elevator in the back yeah. hallway if you walk past Telus. Yeah. I mean, they sound like small modifications. It seems more of a security issue mm -hmm. overall for the building, but I would expect they would be proactive about cooperating. Yeah. And have there, I'm just curious, there there was sort of that round of complaints. And then has there been any more recent complaints? Or, you know, I mean, he went out there in response, I guess, to those earlier complaints, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. One of this, one of the individuals that that has complained has complained multiple times since then. Um, and that's what prompted the the uh, noise compliance check. Okay. And has it been more than that one individual who has complained? Uh, it's been two people. Okay, but one consistently. Yes. All right. Anything else? But it also sounds like it's it's more from what the um, from what John from the building department described. It sounds like it's more of an a less of a music issue, more of a um people being loud when they're coming out of the when they're coming out um or when they're waiting when they were waiting in line okay because the door i guess the door was ajar when the line was forming so then music was just flowing out of the door right um, but then there was like a group of people outside that were yelling and that's when it also got really loud right the price of success. Right. Uh, trade offs. <laughs> That's why I'm confident we're going to come up with a, or they're going to come up with a solution to the problem. Right. Yep. Anything else on that item? No. Nope. All so, right. So sorry. Just so I'm clear, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to Amanda and see if she can work with Thorns about coming up with the. Um, a solution for the lines forming. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah. Would you like, um, I guess, just like a, a way forward? Um, do you, I guess, I'll just report back at the next meeting what she's come, what they've come up with? I think that's fine. Okay. I think so. And um, one last thing. I'm just curious, does she get a copy of this report that John has put together or does, did that just come to you? So it wasn't a report. He oh. just called and let me know. And Oh, okay. Um, but I, I can certainly let her know. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, she, she would have, she said she would have loved to have been at the meeting <clears throat> today. She just couldn't, the start time for the arrive at five was four for her. She had to be there at four. So she just, okay. Yeah. The more information they have, the better. Yeah. All right. Item number nine, discussion and possible vote to adopt a revised application for entertainment license. Yeah. So the, uh, not the November meeting, I think it was the October meeting. Um, we discussed about adding additional form fields for more information. So I have sent you the revised. It, I don't know if there's, you'd like to see anything else on there or. I would like to see one other thing, if it makes sense to everybody. Um, for if the entertainment is proposed for outdoors, I think it makes sense to know how many seats. Hmm. Because it is one thing that's been on my mind with um, Bombix Future Entertainment right. outdoors is they have a capacity inside. What is their capacity outside? And what are their intentions for ticket sales outside?
but I think moving forward, it, it will be really helpful to have what you've inserted here for the types of music. Is it recorded live, amplified, acoustic, DJ, or other? And I was looking at too, and I don't know if this is nitpicky, but I'm just thinking because one of the venues, it wasn't just music, it was also comedy, stand-up comedy. Do we need to say music slash entertainment or something like this, something to be all encompassing, you know, in case in case the entertainment is something other than music, but it could still have those same check boxes. Yeah, I think we should. I mean, based on on feedback from neighbors over the last year for mm -hmm. other venues, I think it makes sense to have people be explicit in what their plans are. Yeah. So just so I am clear, I'm just trying to pull it up. Um, you'd like me another box that says comedy? No, I'm just wondering if it, where it says music, you know, and then you check what kind, check all that apply. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know if there's an all encompassing word. I don't know if we say music slash entertainment, you know, so, something just to indicate. I don't know if anyone would say, oh, this doesn't apply to me because it's stand-up comedy. So I'm not, you know, I'm not, you know what I mean? I see, or yeah. I, I don't know if I can think of something else. The lecture. <laughs> you know? I don't know, a poetry slam or something. There you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, yeah. or I could, it could say, maybe below music, it could say, um, other type of entertainment, question mark, and then just, like a line where they can fill in what the other type is right oh and that's reminding me i was thinking because one of our options on music is other you know it seemed like there should then be some kind of line to if anyone checks other then we probably want to know what other is right okay yeah although i, I know we're running out of room we're gonna have to use a very small font on this to try and get it into one sheet <laughs> Okay, so a line after other, um, how many seats, the seating capacity, if it's outdoor entertainment, um, and adding, do you wanna add, do you wanna just do music slash entertainment, or do you want me to add like another line below and say if, um, something to the fact, if not music, other entertainment, and then a line. I don't know. Uh, how do people feel? Do we want to know specifically what it is, or do we want to just group it to find out if it's recorded live, amplified, acoustic, DJ? I mean, I guess up above it does say description of proposed entertainment. So I right. think in this piece, we're just trying to get out, get at how, like, what format does that entertainment take in terms of the noise levels basically obviously that's what we're after so so it um, sounds like maybe music slash entertainment I, th I think so unless other people have a strong feeling that they should tell us again what they're doing do we want to take a vote on this today or do you Jennifer and Helen feel like you want to see a <clears throat> updated version. Good question. I mean, how, I mean, people are currently filling these things out probably, right? So we, do we not want to, like, is it better, does it behoove us to get it out sooner rather than I later? say, yeah. Yeah. Might as well. Um, so I guess a question too, just look at, so describe the location of proposed entertainment on the premises. And then it says, attach floor plan. Do you, oh, I guess we're not giving them the sheet for that. Is it clear? Like, do we sort of want to lay out whether it's indoors or outdoors or both? Like, does there need to be an indication saying attach floor plan or layout or attach layout for both indoor and outdoor forms of entertainment or areas of entertainment and include um the seat capacity or how many seats somewhere in there. I don't know if it, you know, you can make it clear there that we need to see both. 
because the floor plan sounds like an indoor thing to me. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so, so I'm wondering if we say attach, like attach layout, and then you know parentheses or something indoor, outdoor, or both, or something like that. Whether you know somehow indicate that we need to see all of it. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, that's how I. Yeah, that's how I was envisioning it. Was right. send like, if it's indoor, we need it. If it's outdoor, we need it. If it's both, we need it. Yeah. It's not just one or the other. Um, but I follow what Helen's saying that asking for a floor plan does sort of imply for indoors and and we're in trouble if folks think that outdoors is is a free for all right so I can change it to attach layout mm -hmm. and I and I can I can make it clear by saying mm -hmm. You could say like attached layout for all locations and then like indoor, outdoor, both or something like that. Okay. Or, or both. Can do that too. Anything else? No. No, nothing. All right, then I will make a motion to approve the discussed revisions to the application for entertainment licenses. I'll second. And Natasha? Yes. And um, Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. All right, we're just going to jump back up to item four. Application for a short-term liquor license, Northampton Rotary Foundation Incorporated, Saturday, December 10th, 12 to 6 at Northampton Volkswagen, 361 King Street. This is for the Festival of Trees, and it is a wine and malt license. And again, Commissioner Ewers will recuse herself from deliberating on this item. And I see okay. Hi there, how are you? Good, how are you? Oh, stressed out because I couldn't get on to the... Oh, no. <laughs> Well, you're here now, so. Okay, great. Okay. I'm glad. Sounds like you're coming through the speakers, so you can hear me okay? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So um, what do you need to know from me? So we, so need, we need to know what your event is. All right. So the event is um, being hosted uh, by Carla Casenzi at um, Northampton Volkswagen. It's a fundraiser for the Northampton Rotary Club. Um, we benefit the community. Uh, what it's going to be is from 12 to 6 on Saturday. And we have um, some wine tastings and beer tastings from Fetch Brewery, The Hangar, and Four Seasons, who all um, put in their TIP certifications. We have the liquor liability in place. Um, pretty much that's it. Uh, we do have um, Bob's Barbecue, who already did the whole um, thing through the I think it's Jasmine is the person maybe. Yep. Okay, so that should be said. He'll be cooking outside and selling um, light fare um, during the day. And the wine and beer will be served indoors? It will be, yeah. They'll be indoors. They'll have their own tables, kind of traditional to, you know, they've come to so many different events that we've had, um, but they'll have like a little station set up. They have the little cups that they will sample, um, different beers and things of that nature. Um, they These guys have been doing it forever, so yeah. I'm really comfortable with who we're working with. But yeah, so that's the, the long and short of that. It's Festival of the Trees. Hope that somebody out of this group can make it. <laughs> Great. Do you, Helen, Helen, do you have any questions? I don't. So it sounds like you indicated you've had events there before, similar types of events. 
With There's been definitely similar types of events there before, none that I have held, Carla has. These are vendors that I use at many events that where I travel around. So it could be at like the Rotary Golf Tournament, it could be at Cooley Dickinson Golf Tournament. So I'm familiar with, you know, Harold, Sean Berry, and um, Stacey Rosano, who own those companies. And they know the drill. It's like, you know, when we do work with Cooley, we go have to jump through a ton of hoops. So um, we're very familiar with uh, the process. Okay, great. Great. Yes. Smile. I have no further questions. Nor do I. Do you want to make a motion? Sure, I'll make a motion to approve the application for a short-term liquor license for the Northampton Rotary Foundation, Inc. as detailed in item four on the agenda. I will second. And Natasha? Yes. Uh, Jen uh, Jennifer? I'm abstaining. And, and Helen? Yes. I don't know why I went out of order. And <laughs> <laughs> Make sure we're paying attention. So wacky, Annie. <laughs> Just fixing it up. She's always out of control. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Kim. I hope you have a great event. Thank you. And Annie, um, what do I do next as far as do we have to have some kind of permitting that evening? Uh, yeah. And we haven't paid you yet. Yep. So you'll need an actual license, which I will create when I go into the office tomorrow. Um, and I will send you an email when it's ready. And we'll talk about payment then. And then we can just bring payment down at that point. Yep. All right. Terrific. Thank you all. Have a wonderful Bye. night. Bye. You too. All right. Bye now. All right. Item 10, report from building commissioner on annual liquor license inspections. Annie. Yes. So let me find it here. Sorry, I'm not used to this computer. Okay, so I will just, I'll just read it for the record. As of December 5th, the fire department and building department completed the first and second rounds of inspections for the 2023 on-premise annual liquor licenses and have begun re-inspections. They have inspected all 57 on-premise establishments. Um, 55 have passed, two have outstanding issues. Um, actually, this is, this is, um, out of date because the, the last two passed this afternoon. Oh, great. Uh, um, so there are, um, there's one outstanding establishment that hasn't passed and it is um, Center Street Cafe slash the basement. Um, apparently they are going to be doing a remodel. Um, that's what was told to the fire captain when he went to inspect. Um, so they just, they didn't even bother inspecting. Um, so they would just not get a license until they had an inspection. Okay. So everyone has passed. Okay. Besides, besides that one. Okay. Great. Anybody else have a question for Annie or comment? No, no questions. Helen has a question. Uh, no, yeah, no, like, <laughs> I have a question. I don't know. If I'm, um, when, when was how? When was the basement? Has the basement been open? <laughs> Is that one of the ones that's been closed for a very long time. Yep. Which I think we can talk about more in the next. Yeah, that, that's what I was debating about whether. Yeah. I have a question mm -hmm. here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I do have one question, Annie. Actually, for item ten, did, did the I mean, if the fire department didn't inspect at all, was there no building permit posted? No, there was no building permit, but um, they were told that building permits were going to be pulled. Okay. Alrighty. Then let's move on to. Item 11, vote to renew 2023 liquor licenses pending receipt of all appropriate documents and discussion of renewal issues. So we will start with the first item, the annual off-premises licenses. Uh, so they have all renewed. These are package store licenses. Um, I have all of the appropriate paperwork. Okay. 
And do you want us to separate out an approval for yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Probably, yeah. Do is there any questions from Heather, um, Helen, or Jennifer? No. No question. I'll make a motion to approve the renewal of the 2023 liquor licenses for the annual off premises licenses. I'll second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right. Then another vote to renew 2023 liquor licenses for the annual on premises licenses. With exceptions, can we first take the, um, well, I guess I'll read the, the, the whole item, with the following exceptions, 2023 20, Center Street, LLC, DBA, Center Street Cafe, The Basement, 21 Center Street, 2628 Center Street, LLC, DBA, The Green Room, 28 Center Street, Iron Horse Ventures, Incorporated, DBA, Iron Horse Music Hall, 20 Center Street, Calvin Theater Corporation, DBA, Calvin Theater Cafe, 19 King Street, and Pearl Street Nightclub Incorporated, 10 Pearl Street. So let's take the annual on-premise licenses that have not been named. Sorry, what was that? Let's talk about first the everybody who's good, who's who's not the-, the Oh, oh sorry, okay. okay. Um, so, I, everyone else has renewed um, with the exception of the Sylvester's license um, but that now is in the possession of the city. Um, so it, it won't, it doesn't need to be renewed. Um, it, it'll just act as a new license once it's, once there has been um, a lottery winner selected. Right, this is the um, special act license. Yep. And then other than that, um, yeah, everyone's renewed. I have all the documents ex um, except for I. Um, I'm still waiting on liquor liability insurance from Packards and Mosaic Cafe, um, but they're both working on it and ex expect to have it by the end of the year. Okay. Um, other than that, there are no issues. Okay, then we'll approve that batch before we discuss the exceptions. Sounds yeah, I would say, yeah. Okay, then I'll make a motion to approve the 2023 renewal of liquor licenses for the annual on-premise licenses as outlined in the agenda, minus the exceptions. Sorry, do we need to say contingent on receiving all paperwork before the end of the year? Just to cover Packards and Mosaic or? So that is, that's part of the um, agenda item. So did okay. you say as detailed so in, in the agenda or? I'll repeat it. How's that? Yeah. Okay. Then okay. I'll make a motion to approve the renewal of the 2023 liquor licenses pending receipt of all appropriate documents and discussion of renewal issues for the um, annual on-premise licenses as outlined in the agenda. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right, so let's talk about the exceptions. <clears throat> we have five licenses here, all belonging to Eric Sewer. Um, as part of the agenda packet, we all received the renewal applications. So I just want to look at each one individually because these the five, uh, four of these five businesses have not um, been open in quite some time. Um, the first one, 2123 Center Street, LLC DBA Center Street Cafe slash the basement. There is a note on this renewal that um, the establishment is scheduled to go under a gut renovation late winter. The second on the list is 2628 Center Street, the green room. I noticed on the application, there is no additional information provided, which is required if the premise is not open for business. And the green room has not been open for business since August. And that really should have been filled out and noted. Mm -hmm. And I, I just wanna, for the record, say that this was, um, the closing was, posted on Instagram by the prior manager. And during the month of 
Annie, was it October when, or November when the NPD was doing a door check at 9 p.m. every night of these establishments? Uh, I think it was October, the beginning of October uh, to, the, to the beginning of November. Um, I can tell you in one minute. Yes, it was the beginning of October to the beginning of November. Okay, so the green room did not reopen after that announcement from the then manager. The third establishment, the Iron Horse, it is noted in additional information, the Iron Horse has not yet reopened through COVID. We are hoping to reopen by spring. I'll reference the article that was in the Gazette also in August, where Jim Neal, the then um, marketing person, booking manager for Eric, said they would be rebooking um, very soon and completely and, and under the requirements of the state and city health guidelines. So that has not yet happened. And then finally, there is um, Pearl Street, which has not been open. And I don't know how long. And again, there's no information provided for why that establishment has not been reopened. And I didn't see, unless I missed it, Annie, was there a renewal sheet for the Calvin? Um, I thought I attached all Oh, of you did. That. There is one. Yeah. There it is. Okay. So the Calvin Theater, um, there are concerts on the marquee. So it is open sometimes, sort of. Um, right. So of the five licenses, I think, I, I, you know, I can say with confidence that four of them are not being used. So for the purposes of the renewal season, I would propose renewing these licenses as required and then asking the license holder to appear before the commission at the January meeting to discuss the compliance issues. Um, with the exception of the Calvin Theater? I mean, is the Calvin, or are you saying- Well, we, we have to renew them all, so- Okay. Asking him to come, I would specifically want to hear about the four that we have confirmation are not open. I mean, the Calvin is barely open. It's yeah, right. So I'm sorry. Can you state again? So you're you're suggesting um, go ahead and approve renewal, but then ask for him to appear in front of us, or to is that is that what you? Said? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Natasha, may I ask a question? Yeah. Um, I'm just confused about renewing the the license uh, renewal info when the renewal info is incomplete. Um, so you're still comfortable with that? Just well, I'm, what I'm not comfortable with is not renewing without the license holder having been given any notice that it would be occurring. Okay. And I think that that is something that should have happened if it was to occur. No, thank you. I appreciate the clarification. Yeah. Yep. And Annie, do you, your sense is that that is accurate, that he should, if we were not to renew any license, that that person should be, I mean, that's what we've done in the past. That's what we've done in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that makes sense. That seems like the correct process to follow that since we haven't given notice that there was potential for non-renewal, that we should not at this time just pull that. Um, yeah, but ask him to appear in January to explain, mm -hmm. give some dates, specific dates perhaps of when they'll, these licenses will be used because I believe it's been mm -hmm. over a year for. <laughs> it's, it's been over a year for all of all, well, except for the green room, but yes, it has been over a year. Um, and there's no period of time that defines a pocket license. It's just when you're no longer using the license, when you're not doing business with it. Um, that doesn't mean, I mean, it mean, can mean closing the doors and going out of business, but it can also just mean closing the doors and keeping your business, just not being open. Mm -hmm. So a pocket license, my interpretation of it can be a pocket for a day or it can be a pocket for six months, mm -hmm. but these have been a pocket for a long time. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, through an entire renewal period, essentially. Yes. So, yeah. Um, and there were certainly extenuating circumstances in 2021, you know. There for, were definitely for being closed. Yeah. And but, it would be it would be a, a wishful stretch to say that other uh, venues have bounced back completely from that period of time, but they have reopened. Yes. So yeah. And can I also clarify that the precedent has been a full renewal and it's not a contingent renewal? Well, there isn't a precedent that I'm aware of, at least not during the time I've been on the commission. So I think it's a matter of syntax. We are we are requiring a license holder to come before the commission and, and explain to us why they're not in compliance. So that's going to happen no matter what. It's so do allowing the renewal to move forward doesn't have to be contingent on him doing that because we have the authority to require that of any license holder who's who's in violation. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. And I'm thinking the closest thing in my recollection during our time is that um businesses that have been planning to close slash sell have wanted right. to maintain their license in order to keep it as an asset, which is perfectly reasonable, but we've had them check in like at three months or six yes. months, you know, throughout the process to make sure that the process was continuing on so that this license would actually be used um, within a reasonable amount of time. So although this is obviously a somewhat different situation, but that's the closest one that I can think about during my- Right, and we actually have one of those on the agenda this afternoon. We have an update on uh, the American Legion license. Oh, right. For yep. example, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that is the protocol that every other license holder has followed. Yeah. Okay. Yep, I'm comfortable with that. Okay. Annie, do you have anything that you want to add? Um, I don't, but it just, I just remembered that there's, um, let's see, it was 21, it was, 2123 Center Street LLC and Pearl Street do not, um, he did not provide liquor liability for those um, establishments. And the only reason I didn't mention it because they're separated differently on my desk. So when I looked at them today and I saw the two that uh, Packards and Mosaic, I wasn't even thinking because these were separated out nonetheless. Uh, liquor liability I do not have for um, the basement in Pearl Street so until I have that he's not get, I mean he's not going to get physically get those licenses anyways right right okay should that change how we make the motion or does it fall under the agenda itself of all appropriate documents yeah, no, no, I don't think so. I just because mm -hmm. I mean, Jennifer asked, like, is this contingent upon? And I mean, in some way, it is because he, I mean, he's not going to get his license until all the paperwork's in, anyways. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments before I make the motion? Not for me. Okay, Jennifer, you're good. I'm good. Thank all you. Right. Okay, so how about this? Um, I'll make a motion to renew the 2023 liquor licenses pending receipt of all appropriate documents for the accepted locations in agenda item 11 with a requirement that the license holder appear before the commission in the January 2023 meeting. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right. Thank you. Item 12, vote to renew the 2023 licenses pending receipt of all appropriate documents for common victualler, entertainment, auto amusement, in holder, lodging, and car dealer class one, two, and three. Um, so I have honestly no, no issues with any of these. Great. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing, nothing else to say. 
<laughs> then I will make a motion to renew the 2023 licenses pending receipt of all appropriate documents as outlined in agenda item 12. Second. And Natasha? Yes. And uh, Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Item 13, clerk's update on the American Legion. Okay, um, so this is just good news. They have everything they have gotten in. Um, they've passed their inspection. Um, they've made payment. They've made payment on the past, past two years. Um, so everything is, I know this has been a long process. So I just wanted to close the loop by putting it on the record that um, they have everything and um, all the renewal paperwork. And so they're all set to reopen. Great. That's great news. Yeah. It has been a long time coming. They've worked hard to get there. Yes, they have, so. All right, anything else from Jennifer Helen on that? No. Nope. All right, no questions. Item, no questions. Mm -hmm. Item 14, to cut discussion of 2023 meeting schedule. Hmm. Uh, first Wednesday of the month, 4 p.m. Uh, yeah, there will be, there will come a time where that it's yeah. difficult for me to get there right at four, or I have to leave my job early to get there at four. Um, but I don't know. And I know we go through this every year. And by the time we talk about it, then I'm like, no, it's no longer an issue. Um, it will become an issue again. I don't know, though, if it's realistic to move it at five, if that throws everyone off, um, including you, Annie. When does what month does this become it. a thing? It's a good, a really good question. I mean, probably not till spring, honestly, or even summer. So, yeah. you know, I don't know if we check in when it becomes an issue. Um, I, I don't know if it's easier to just, you know, do it in advance to keep it consistent or if I just bring it up <laughs> when it becomes an issue. Right. And meeting downtown is does not help you based on where you're getting from work no. to meeting site. Yeah, you don't want me to come straight from work into, the, into that room mm -hmm. with you. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, no, that would actually make it harder. I mean, it's actually made it easier, honestly, that we've been, been on Zoom. So, and does that mean that, I know we've talked about this and now I can't remember the latest, that there will come a time when we're meeting downtown again? Well, I mean, we can, we just, it has to be a quorum. Right. So there has to be two of us and it, the, it would be a hybrid meeting. So it'll always be available forevermore for people to attend via Zoom, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, and my personal preference is to meet in person, but it is just a personal preference. It's not, you know, I know it works out better for both of your schedules. So I'm happy to keep it the way we're doing it. Yeah. Until somebody else decides they miss that room, <laughs> <laughs> and their parking placard to use for one hour a month. <laughs> That's a huge perk. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I think it makes sense right now to just to to continue our meetings for 2023 4 p.m. on Wednesdays, and then approaching a crunch time for you, Helen. If it's becoming a problem, we can revisit it then. Okay, that's fine. Is that is that okay for you? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Item 15, approval of minutes, October 5th and November 2nd. Everybody read the minutes. Mm -hmm. All right. Somebody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of October 5th and November 2nd, 2022. I will second. Um, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Item 16, new business. Um, before we jump into the thing that was just added, I just want to, Annie, I just want to thank you for all of the renewal season work that you do. Oh. You set it up so seamlessly and you do all the homework and we have all the information that we need. And I know it's been a bear of a month for that. So I just want to thank you. I second. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Annie. Yes, of course. Thank you. All right, um, discussion of renewed noise complaints at the Majestic that has just come in today from Council President Nash. Um, since Helen has been on the commission, right? You were yes, here, I was here Jennifer, we had the Majestic yeah. Saloon yeah. downtown. 
there were a series of noise complaints from a neighbor upstairs and he directed the noise complaints initially to then um, ward counselor Nash. So they were sort of all working together with the business owner, the three of them to work stuff out. And then it ultimately came to the license commission because things weren't really proceeding in a way that was helpful for anybody. And um, we had the decibel count. We did, you know, went through all of the stuff. And at that time, Majestic got everything completely under control to the satisfaction of the neighbors and did some um, sound mitigation and things like that. And we haven't heard a peep until today. Mm -hmm. So what I would recommend, Annie, is informing. I mean, so Phil has not responded. Phil is the owner of Majestic, but not the operator. He has not responded to communications or he did. I was unclear in that email. It, sound, it sounded like he has not responded to, was it three calls? I think yeah. it was three. Yeah. And Kayla is still the manager of record. She was the paper. manager of record, yes. Okay. And is that still a true thing? Um, I can't say one way okay. or another. Um, but I will reach out. I saw Phil during the renewal season, so he's around. Um, okay. I will reach out to both of them. Yeah, because I know that they've had, they've sort of re, um, reconstructed the concept a little bit, and they've definitely been way more active as, as a, a bar entertainment stuff going on place. Um, so I'm not 100% convinced that Kayla's still there. So if she, I mean, obviously there's a paperwork issue if she's not there, because we're going to need the appropriate manager of record. Um, but it is possible that the people working don't have the historical knowledge of what happened a few years ago. And I'm assuming their license for entertainment, they have seven nights a week, but in the past they were just using it on the weekends. Oh, I can't say. Okay. I'd, I'd have to look at the license that I can't access from here. Okay, that's fine. So that would be one thing to figure out is what their license says for um, scheduling. And informing, you know, reaching out to Phil and Kayla if she's still there that that this has arisen again. And because Phil has not responded to the complaints and sort of worked in a neighborly way like they did in the past, then, I mean, I think they're just gonna have to come to the next meeting. Yeah, and it's interesting, I'm checking the email again and it says that I've written Phil three times in the past three months and the last email was ignored. So they've had some communication, but it's unclear, clearly. So three times in the last three months? It says three times in the past three months yeah. and the last email was ignored. So, yes. so there may have been some response, but obviously it hasn't been resolved. Right. And he's, if he's been trying to resolve this for three months, then yeah. we need to have them come in. They need to be informed of it. They need to mitigate it immediately to the best that they can. And then they need to come in. Got it. All right. Do you have any comments or questions or suggestions for, for this from Helen or Jennifer? No, I think you've outlined the steps just, or, you know, in the clearly and, that, and that's what needs to happen. Yep. Yeah. 